Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Video 66, and we're going to continue with our Flash Builder program that we're eventually going to put into Facebook. And uh, this is very much a must-know video. There's just tons of information here. You're just not going to find anywhere else. You're not going to find it in Adobe Docs. You're not going to find it on the web. You're just going to find it here. And we're going to show you how to do some state code programming. I've done a lot of Flash Catalyst coding in the past, and so basically I've gotten so good at it, I just code without using Flash Catalyst anymore. Uh, and we're going to show you how to hook up the buttons in a switch. And we're going to use the asynchronous list view to populate our list arrays and click on those and actually play YouTube videos. So let's go to Flash Builder. And so in Flash Builder, I want to remind you that there are two states. There's a view state or a home state. And then that home state will basically uh, populate a text area box uh, with HTML. And then in the class one state, I could have called that state one or, you know, lesson state or whatever, but class one, it's okay. I actually have four boxes. I have a title box a list box, a list box, and a, an assignment box. I'm going to populate those. So I'm going to populate this with the title of the lesson, populate this with the videos I'm going to play, populate this with my downloads, and populate this with my assignments. And you can see there's some buttons on this as well that I'm going to need to program. So in order to do that, I need to parse all the XML for that. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now we've already learned how to parse the title XML and in a sense uh, parse HTML. So this assignment box is taken care of. But the one thing we haven't learned how to do is parse list boxes, and we're going to concentrate on that today. So let's go to source view. Then the one thing I need to do is be able to transition between my two states. So I want to be able to transition between my home state and what I call my class one state. And it's very easy to do. Just create a little method. I'm going to call this home button click handler. And it's going to ask myself, well, let's set constant equal to state and that equal to the current state. And then, am I in the home state or not? And if not, set current state equal to home. So all you have to do is set the current state equal to whatever state you want to be in, and you'll go there. But I have a little bit of a, uh, in a sense, some questions to ask it before I go there or not. Uh, and the next state, I want to go to class one. So I'd say, click the switch me method. I'll set the constant state equal to current state. I'll ask the question, am I in state one or not? And if I am, don't go there. But if I'm not, go there. So that's pretty good. And that's how it's done. Now, once I go there, I'm actually going to run a, a bunch of stuff down here that's actually going to parse through my XML and actually populate those uh, boxes that we were looking at previously. But before we do that, let's go ahead and set our home button. So I can go and grab that, and I can copy that. So whenever I click on my home button, I actually go there. So the way I do this, and is, you know, people do it different ways. I just go to Design View. I click on the home button, and I go to Source. And there's my home button right now. And if I space and I start typing in click, there's my click handle. I can click that, uh, do a uh, auto code generation, or just basically paste in the uh, home click button that I just copied into my clipboard, and there it is right there. And so what you need to notice, this is actually a group that contains the image and the text. So when I roll over that group, I get a rollover handler that we saw last time, or a rollout handling that we saw last time. And basically you roll over, it glows, and you roll off, it doesn't. And now when you click on it, it'll execute this click handler. And when you go to this click handler, it'll It'll ask you if you're in the home state or not, and if you're not, it'll set you to the home state, and you'll go there. So now what we want to do is go to uh, class one state in case we want to work with the lessons. So what I've done, I've actually created five button methods. We'll call it button one click handler, button two click handler, three, four, and five. And each one of those methods, I actually run a switch me. And the switch me has a number, and what that number is doing is actually telling me where in my XML to go and parse all that data. So basically, if you go to 1, that will be child 1. That's where lesson 1 is. 2 is where lesson 2 is. 3, 4, and 5 is where lesson 5 is, and so on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take these click handers, so when I click on them, I actually, my button actually fires this method and then goes to the switch me method. So let's go to the design view once again. I'm just going to click on button 1. That takes me where I need to be in the code. So here I'm in button 1, I have, and I have a rollover, and I have a rollout, and a rollover. And you can see I actually put in my click button already. So if I click on this uh, group now, it'll actually fire the button one underscore click handler and run that switch me run method. And I went ahead and populated button two with uh, click handler button two and button three with three and four with four and five with five. And so all that does is when I click on the particular button, it runs the methods associated with and it actually just puts that number which tells you what lesson I need to parse. So let's roll over and go to switch me and look at the switch me method in more detail. So the first thing the switch me method does is say, hey, am I in class one? If not, take me there. So I could be in the home state, for example. Now once I've done that, I actually want to start populating these boxes. So, so let's start with two that we've already done in the past. Here's a title and here's the assignment box. Let's make sure those are the correct names. So to go to design view, in design view, if I click over that and I actually look at the properties box, I can see the name of this 
box right here is my title. And the assignments box is right here. And I look at properties again. I see the name of my assignments box is my assignment is. And let's go to source view again. And we see in the switch me case we're actually populating the my title box and the my assign box. And the way we do that is pretty much we're just using the get data result. We've done this in the past. We use the last result dot title. That's the uh, from the XML. And we just put in the number that I switched. So if it's one, it gets the first title. If my num is equals two, I get the second title. And that's the argument that comes from the switch me. So down here, when, for example, if I click on button two, right, I go to switch me and bring in the number two and parsed in as a two, which brings title two. Isn't that pretty easy? So we've already worked with bringing in titles from a previous lesson. Make sure you go and review that. And we've already worked with bringing in assignments or parsed XML. So make sure you review that. Just to go over it real quickly, once again, we're going to be going for the assignment. Whatever the switch number is, it takes it to that particular XML. We get the, the last three data. We create an XML string out of that. And we just basically use the import from string and text flow utility and dot text flow to actually bring that HTML into the MySign box. We already covered that previously, but what we have not covered is how to populate a list box. Now, it's not too difficult, and I want to remind you of the XML real quick. Let's go back there. We're in our XML. Remember, XML starts like an array where the first value is zero. So in the zeroth value, that's going to bring in the assignment or title for the home page. So when I click the class one, then I'm actually starting with one, two, three, four, and five. So one would match up with the title Eclipse and Basic PHP. And here's my downloads, and that's going to bring in the downloads for the course. And here's my videos, and that will bring in the videos for the course. So when I use switch me one, that takes me lesson one, and switch me two would take me where? To lesson two. And it'll bring the title, the assignment, the downloads, and the videos. And I'm populating a list box with the downloads and the videos. And you can see uh, whenever I hit item, it actually brings all these elements of the item in. And for videos, when I hit item, it actually brings in these elements, for example, the label and the URL link. So let's go back to the uh, program. And so now we're going to parse uh, this uh, list stuff. So the first thing I want to do is bring in the videos. So whatever I put in here, for example, switch me one, we'll bring in title one. So all the videos will come in and bring the items that have, for example, the title and the link. So I'm using, as before, the get data results, the last results, the videos, as I've done in the past, converting that to a collection and using the type utility to bring that into my list. But I'm doing something different here. This is not the name of the list, but this is the asynchronous view. Let's roll over that and click on it and go to it. Now this is something you're not going to find anywhere else because this is new to Flash Builder 4. But in between the list, and notice my name, my list ID is right here. That's so this is how I know what the ID of the list that I'm populating is. But in order to bring the data in, I have to use this asynchronous list view. And the ID I'm populating is my list asynchronous. Isn't that cool? So go ahead and roll over it to get some code hinting and hit F2 to make it stay. And basically what the asynchronous view is going to do, it's going to act like a get item for you. It's going to bring all that data into your list box for you. And the way you know which list box you're bringing that data into is to go ahead and get that list box and ID. And that's the list box it's going to use. So if I go back to my first one, you see if I click on that and go to the properties panel, the name of that box is my list. And the other box, the downloads box, if you click on the properties panel, you see the name of that is my list too. So if we go back to source code, you can see the my list to async dot list, if we roll over and click on that, has the ID of my list too. Now I want you to watch this video a few times because it may sound a little bit complicated. And once you start working with it, it'll populate your XML for you automatically. So let's go over this one more time so you understand it. First of all, you just put a list box on the stage. You have to give it a name. In this particular case, we just called it my list. We'll click on that. And go to source view, and in source view, you got this asynchronous list view. And that's going to populate that box for you. So you have to give it an ID to populate. And how does it know which box to populate? Well, that's the ID name of the list there. So let's go to the my list async and see where that's at. My list async dot list receives the parsed XML. So basically, what you're going to do is use the get data result, which we talked about last time, last results, videos, that's the tag you're going to populate from, and all the items in that tag. Use the convert to collection type utility to populate the async list. And that's all there is to it. Now, uh, sounds complicated, but actually this is fairly understandable. So go through the video a few times. You actually now know how to switch between uh, different lessons. Let's check it out and see if it works. So I'm going to run the utility real quick. So I'm in the home state, and I want to go to state one. 
and all my containers are now populated. Go to state 2, state 3, state 4, and basically it's using that switch number to bring in the different XML data. Isn't that pretty cool? And so what we're going to do next time, actually click on one of these things and actually bring the data forward and play a video, for example. So let's review what we did today. Basically today we showed you how to do some state coding and showed you that current state is all you need basically to change the different states. But we do want to use a little bit of conditional handling there. Then we showed you basically how to parse a list. We'd already done uh, titles and uh, HTML parsing before, but parsing a list is new to us. And the key to that is understanding how the uh, async list view works. And pretty much that was all there was to this video. Uh, good luck, and we're going to wrap everything up as far as the Flashbook program is concerned and start doing some Facebook programming in the next video. So thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively. See you next time.